In this free CAD tutorial, we're looking at creating 3D meshes such as honeycomb mesh or hexagon mesh and utilizing both FreeCAD and the slicer to easily create them. In this tutorial, we're going to use a very simple model that's been built in FreeCAD. It's this basic shape, which has been created in the part design with a single body and single revolve sketch. My intent is to create a semicircle of a honeycombed pattern in here, hexagon mesh. So if you're doing this in FreeCAD or any other CAD package, creating parametric patterns is seriously CPU intensive, but we can use the slicer to our advantage. For that, I need a modifier, and this is just going to act as a mask. So we want the honeycomb in a half moon crescent shape on this surface. For that, I'm going to create a new body, and this is where I'm going to mask that shape. That's let say the face of this body, and we'll need to use a subshape binder or in geometry from the original body. Let's hide the body. Let the top face of the binder. I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to use the arc slot. Hover over coincident to the center point. And I'm not bothering about dimensions. I'm just going to draw something like this, bring this out say here. Let's close that so we have our art shape I want to use as a mask. I'm going to show the original body. That means I can see where I'm going to pad this. I'm going to pad this and I want it to go through the body. At the moment it's going in this direction. Let's reverse. Now with the modifier, we want the shape to occupy the same space as the volume that we're masking. It doesn't matter if it comes out past the volume. You can see this is in line with this face, the original body, and it's jutting out the bottom. Let's hit OK. And that's it for the model. Let's hide that sketch. And I'm going to export both these models. First, let's export our main body file and come down to export. I'm going to be using FreeMF. Call this main. Next is our mask. Pull this out. Pull this mask. And now we can go over to our slicer. I'm using the AnyCubic Next slicer, but the workflow will be the same across all slicers. First of all, let's import our main body. If we look at the objects, in here we can see we have one object. I'm going to click on the object, and then right click and add modifier. So from here I can select a number of different modifiers, but I want to load one from disk. And we'll select our mask and hit open. So now we've got our modifier in here. So anything I apply to the modifier will only be applied to this part here. So if we look down to say our strength, we can find a number of settings in here in our slicer, and they'll be similar to yours for the top and bottom shells and the number of layers. So I'm going to zero out the layers. Top shell thickness becomes disabled and the bottom shell layers, I set this to zero as well. So we've got those two settings in there. That slice the plate and we can see it's already taking effect. At the moment we have a crisscross pattern. Let's come down and look at the infill and look at the sparse infill pattern. At the moment it's grid. I'm going to change this to honeycomb. Let's re-slice and we can see we've got the honeycomb now. Now when we look at the pattern, you can see we have these parts filled in. We don't want these and this is to do with the wall loops. The trouble is, if we zero out the wall loops and then re-slice, it does remove those partial infills. But we have a problem. We've now got a weak infill that will fail along the joining line. So we need the wall loops and also come to strength and come down to the infills. We have the infill wall overlap. So let's just slice this. 
and increase the infill wall overlap. I'm going to set this to 50%. Click off and then reslice. We've now strengthened the bond between the infill and the rest of the model. We can take this further if we wanted to by setting this to 100%, get a better bond. And also, the wall loops we can increase as well. This just shows what's happening within here. I'm going to set this something like four. And then slice a plate. Now you may want to change the size, say the hexagons in here, or whichever infills you've chosen. And this is the sparse infill density. Lowering the value will increase the infill size and increasing this value will create a denser infill. Once you're happy and we've sliced, then we can go on to printing. So we're using our slicer to our advantage. Now, if we look at the slices, different layers, and move this down, you'll notice as we start getting to the infills, we can really see this mask in action. We've got our usual infill and our denser infill around the outside. This will only work on the XY plane or the printing as the infills are laid from that direction. We do have 3D infills, but if your mesh is orientated differently, then you may have to model it actually in FreeCAD or create a modular model where you can lay those parts flat on the print bed. So I hope you found that video useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.